Welcome back to the Underway Podcast. This is episode five. Remember, Underway is the only way, and today is the day to get underway. I'm joined here with Lucas O'Brien and Ben Newland. Uh, welcome, guys. Uh, hello, and thank you for having me. No worries at all. Great to be here. How are we going? Are we good? Good. <clears throat> good, nervous, uh, all of the above. Mm. Awesome. That's perfect. That's, that's exactly what we want. Mm. I am too, boys. Um, I'm going to do a quick intro of you guys. I'm just going to give some, uh, some previous placements and things like that, some histories for uh, these guys so you can learn a bit more about who they are and what they are. Um, so basically, uh, uh, Benny first. Ben's uh, best open and placing uh, is 24th. Uh, in 2020 his best quarterfinals placing is 13th in 2023 and his best semi slash was a sanctionals it was Oz champs he placed 10th in 10th 2020 and he placed seventh in the touring pro um, before it was the semi-final um, but seventh nonetheless and uh, his future aspirations are to be a fully qualified osteopath um, but yeah, we'll get a bit more into Benny's story later. But Lucas, his best open placing is 28th in 2020. Um, he, he says that that was, a, that was a different year for CrossFit. So he also mentioned that he placed 54th in 2022. And in the quarterfinals, he's placed 31st, which is this year. And it, it, the scores are still live. He's two points out of being in 30th. We know that the top 30 go to semifinals. So um, uh, I'm currently sitting in ninth and Ben is currently sitting in 13th. Um, so uh, Ben and I are inside the top 30 and Lucas is two points outside of the top 30. We're going to get into that today. Um, and essentially his, his best semis placings have been team placings, which were third place in 2019. Uh, and that was in a sanctional event when they were only taking one to the games. So that could have been a games qualification spot. Um, and then fifth in 2022. His future aspirations is to make the CrossFit Games. He told me in a team, um, but I believe he's got an individual who'll find that somewhere in his future. This, these boys are, are powerful fellas right here. But they're athletes. Uh, they're passionate fitness goers. Guys, let's get into it. Quarterfinals. How do we feel about the quarterfinals programming? Lucas, tell me. Starting with me. Um, well, look, I'm going to... I'm going to give you the, the raw emotion I was feeling on Friday morning when they released it. And it's, um, what the hell were those crossovers? Honestly, what were those crossovers? <laughs> I, I could look at event one. Um, event one, I was frothing at the mouth. I was like, here we go. This is CrossFit. I saw the crossovers and at first I thought it was double unders. I was like, why? What, what are you trying to prove? Yeah. Um, Event three and four were looking uh, pretty cross fitty too, but I knew it'd be damage control. And event five was right back to like frothing at the mouth. So by the time I came to terms with those crossovers, I was like, all right, it's, it's pretty good programming. And so for anyone listening that doesn't know, essentially uh, quarterfinals is five workouts um, that are released by CrossFit. You have to complete them in a weekend. There's 24 hour windows to complete uh, the first two, 24 to complete the second two, one, and then 24 hours to complete the last one, totaling five workouts. You need to submit videos. You need to have a verified judge. Um, it needs to be completed at a CrossFit affiliate maybe maybe scratch that last one um better to be competed at a uh, crossfit affiliate but uh, one of the workouts had crossover skipping uh in the quarterfinals and essentially that was a new exercise uh for crossfitters everywhere and so it was a um an even playing field i guess for everyone to, to have a crack at a new skill um but yeah lucas is talking about um you know his surprise thoughts towards that um but yeah you didn't like him mate did not like him did not like him yeah I, I can look at them now and I'm like, you know what? Now that it's done, I'm like, it was pretty cool for all of the athletes that weren't good at it, me included, to have to adapt and learn a new skill and then perform. Now, originally, I just thought that um, I was in my own world and I was the only one bad at them. But then just seeing more and more, especially the top scores, were people that were like, I do not have this skill. And everyone just figured it out. And I thought that that was a really good test on the athletes and how well they could adapt. But if I'm going off my original emotion, I hated them. <laughs> Fair enough, man. But you actually, the story goes deeper on this because you actually did that workout twice. Yes. So was that not your favorite one? I thought it was just your favorite one because you did uh, it twice. Uh, you know what? I, um, <laughs> I would say there was, there was a lot of frustration there. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah. the story is I, um, we hit this workout after event one. So we had like a good two to Three hours rest, you'd say? Yeah, like two hours. Two hours rest. And then we um, were all just kind of like having some attempts and 
we kind of just said, all right, screw it. Let's let's give it a crack. That's not 100% true. <clears throat> not 100% true? I got there, I got, I got there at like 8 a.m. in the morning and I was practicing uh, them all day. So I, just, I, just, I talked to Luke before he started. I was on the phone. He's like, mate, just get there, practice them. He's like, get sets of 40 and then do sets of 40 under fatigue. So I was there on morning practicing and Lucas rolls in. He's just like chilling, does a couple, walks away. We do the workout. It doesn't go well. <laughs> and then what's he do for the next two hours or some coaching classes is he practices them. Yep. And I'm like, sorry, I'm interrupting yours. But it's like, I think that was the great thing about that event was like, yes, crossovers, like they make great fit people look dumb, but it's like, great. You just highlighted this massive weakness. And you've built, you also highlight the ability for these really, really fit people to learn a skill really quickly and then demonstrate it. Yep. And that shows the capacity these people have. But it's like, mm. how are you going to like, yeah, cool, Bosman showed us something we all can't do. Mm -hmm. We're going to bitch about it or we're going to like get to work and be able to do it. Yeah, so like, It's up to you. Medeiros won that workout, I think, worldwide. Fittest man on earth won the workout. It's like, great. Yep. Like leading by example. What do we want to be? We want to be as fit as we can. Lead by, like, dudes, do that. Adapt to it. So straight he, with the bat, the boys are then, on fire today. Yeah, I like he, it. I like this energy, boys. But he, good. But I'm he, glad we're getting into it here. He practiced it and then he fucking killed it. Yeah, man. No, it was good to see. 100%. I was yeah. going to say that that's probably the example or like that attitude and mindset is probably the reason that was one of your top scores, wasn't it? Because uh, it was up there. Yeah, it was up there. But I just like, I'm like, I looked down and this is the one that could knock me out of quarters. This is the one that could knock anyone out of quarters. And I'm like, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm True. not going to let a skill get in the way of the fact that I've been working really hard for months. Mm -hmm. So I just came in, I worked on it. I had sets of 40 in the belt before I started, sets of 40 under fatigue in the belt before I started. And I was sweet. I had a good workout. Yeah, so your thoughts on, yeah, there you go. There you, there's your thoughts mm -hmm. on that workout too. And what about general, what about quarterfinals in general, like for you, Benny? I'm wrapped. Um, it, I, if you asked me like six months ago whether I was going to qualify, I had no idea. I wasn't in good shape, wasn't fit. Been working really hard on that. Um, and finishing 32nd in the open sort of built up a bit of confidence. Yeah. I was like, okay, maybe like I'm, maybe I'm fitter than what I think I am. Mm -hmm. Maybe I've got more capacity than what I think I have. And maybe all the work I've been doing is actually working against the field, which is great. Um, but I'm, I'm stoked, man. Like sitting in 13th at the moment, I thought I'd be on the bubble. Or I thought I'd be out of out of the mix. So yeah. it's a good little confidence. Just keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, hundred percent. No, you, you you know you boys work hard for it, and um, yeah, the to see Lucas in that workout because um, he messaged me actually messaged me on the day, and mm. and I, I flicked him a message and was like, oh, well, you know, how the score's going, what's what's going on, and I just gave him my opinion on the score because I don't know what, what did you get on the first attempt? It was like three hundred and something, right? Oh, I think it was three hundred and I'm gonna say. 40 around that 340 mark yeah and um i just i just knew straight away. i looked at that and i was like dang you're gonna have to do a redo man like you, you're gonna have to do something to, to be a, yeah more competitive and then you came back and yep. yeah i heard from dean the other day and he obviously ben just mentioned he was like yeah he's like bro like <laughs> he's like lucas was in the gym like i left and then i came back and like he was still doing crossovers <laughs> and then <laughs> And so, like, so, but you, you're always 100 percent right. I found like it was just a skill you had to get in there and yeah. actually practice. Like, if I had thought back to that workout, I'm like, why did I not just like actually just stand there and just practice them for however long? Like, I practiced them for 20 it, minutes before was, the workout, but I underestimated it. Straight like, dickhead. I was embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. I was straight up embarrassed practicing them because I'm like, I'm a a fit athlete. I've been doing CrossFit for like 11 years. Relatively fit. Um. Yeah. Relatively. Um. <laughs> and like here I am struggling to jump over a rope. Yeah. But I'm like, no, like I'm going to be bad at this thing until I'm good at it. And I just kept going until I was good. And then I was like, sweet, I can do sets of 40. And I'm like, I'm good. But like, that's a natural progression of anything. It's just, you just got to be humble and talking, knocking on the gin, people laughing at you. Thank you. Fuck. It's yeah. all right. Keep going. I think it also 100%. highlighted, um, it, it gave me memories of double unders again. Yeah. Like, 100%. I, I haven't experienced that level of frustration whipping and whatever else you want to put in that bubble of skipping. I'm sure you've experienced some level of whipping. <sighs> wink, wink. Uh, but like thinking about all of the like people that we would coach on a day-to-day -day basis and we're constantly telling them like you will get it. Like you just need to keep practicing and keep feeling it. And you see them. Sometimes people get it, sometimes people don't. But over the period of consistency, they do. With this, it just highlighted all of that again. It was frustration. It brought back those memories of like, I'm not going to get this. Can I get this? This is a skill I can get in 20 minutes to an hour. I don't know. But 
if you just sat there and figured out what it was, because everyone had this little this little thing. Anyone you talk to with the crossovers, just like, oh, it was this. It was the arms out. It was the arms low. It was the twist and flist. Oh, they are uh, flish and quick. <laughs> like Harry Potter reference. We swish and flick. There we, yeah. there we go. Swish and flick. So the swish and flick of the wrists, and that would like get it for some people. But it was really fascinating to have that highlighted again of, oh wait, I'm a I'm a beginner. Hmm. Figure it out. Yeah. Which I think is great that Bods did because it's like all these amazing athletes and now you just, it's not the movement I'm talking about. It's like the thing behind releasing that movement is like, how are these people going to respond to this thing that looks stupid? Are they going to be like, nah, it's dumb. We're not going to do it. It's like, I don't care. Like it's something new, learn and adapt Mm. and you can choose whether you're going to progress or not. Like it's the sort of the message behind the movement, I reckon. Mm. It's really cool. Yeah, so I liked it. Yeah, you liked it. I liked it too. I th- yeah, I was hearing the um, I was hearing the word around the traps about it, and there was a lot of people complaining. And I was just like, Why? "Come on, guys!" Like, I'm like, "Just don't do it. Just shut up and move yeah. on." Like yeah. you've been given a test, like every other movement you've ever been given in CrossFit. Yeah, let's just get to it. Like exactly. you know, learn it, pick it up, and let's go. But um, I definitely had initial thoughts like your initial thoughts, Luke, and I reckon everyone else did yeah. about like. The fuck? I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. I was like surprised. Yeah. I wasn't like, oh, I didn't expect that. No. But then as soon as I saw it, I was like, well, fair enough. They did it in the games last year. Like we yep. knew, we knew that, that it could potentially come up. Yeah. And they gave us the blessing of not giving it in a, in, a, in a double under. Imagine if it was a double under. Like I probably done better. <laughs> I've been practicing those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm probably better at those, to be honest. I've been practicing them, but not. Yeah, I've been practicing my singles, but but did you did you flip on that? Like you you. Or do you still believe I, that I didn't agree with the test? Oh, no, I flipped. It sounds I, like you flipped. When, yeah. when I finished the second, I guess when I got a better score and I figured it out, I was like, I'm glad I just went through all that practice. I just wish that I'd set that standard for myself earlier yeah. and gone, same thing. Like, I think I saw, um, I watched Jay Crouch's vlog and he was like, I'm not starting this until I get the 40. Yeah. Hearing Ben say that he didn't stop until he got 40 under fatigue, I was like, fuck, you know what? Anyone that got a good score started that 40 early like they just kept practicing if i were to look back i'm like i wish i'd done that but for the most part got into the other end of it i was like sweet i actually got better at this skill and i'm so happy that we were tested like that mm-hmm. better thoughts now yeah nice. yeah awesome yeah cool what which other workout sort of stands out in your mind like what's 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 another one that you <laughs> you you guys want to chat about event one yeah. Hello, darkness, <laughs> my old friend. <laughs> what was event one? Uh, so it was nine front squats at 102, and then you had to do nine lengths of a seven and a half meter handstand walk. Had to be unbroken. Um, 15 front squats at 83, 15 ring muscle ups, 21 front squats at 61, and then 21 wall facing strict handstand push ups. Uh, which is a great workout for both of us. Like, mm. we both looked at that and were like, this is fun. This is going to be great. And um, Did you, were you guys <clears throat> too fired up? We were G'd. We were, we were good. We were, we were ready to go. Um, we were we were so G'd, we had a false start. Yeah, we actually did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so just, yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. To fill you guys in, uh, there's there's a workout that these guys have both been penalised on. Yeah. And that was it. The penalties happen. Penalties they, happen. They happen. You're, you're moving yeah. fast, you're competing, you're going for it. They yeah. happen. Like, you we're, know. We apologise, HQ. We will do better. Yeah. Um, so And it was that workout. And so you guys got penalised for the same thing. Yep. Yeah. So just dumb and dumber over here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the funny, I, you might be like, fuck it. You might be right. <laughs> I remember cleaning knee it. Knee and hip extension, right? Uh, mine was knee. Yeah. I remember cleaning it standing up and seeing Lucas just hit the bottom and just like going. I'm like, man, I got to go. Yeah. yeah. And I just like started touching going the squats and I thought I was standing up. And then I like look back on the video after I got the um, email from HQ and I'm like, yeah yeah you look at it with like a closer eye and yeah there was uh two reps in the hundred that were dodgy Mm. yeah i had a lot more yeah so lucas got a major penalty i got a major penalty that messed us up because we woke up on saturday morning and uh lucas is in 11th i was in 13th and we're like oh my god like we're doing astronomically better than what we thought we would be you guys killed it um Mm. we're like this is great and then lucas gets an, an email midway through sunday yeah, yeah, it I was, uh, no, no, it was midway through Saturday after event three. So as we were kind of like going for food between events and oh, okay. g ourselves up, All right. I was like, oh, here's an interesting email from CrossFits. Yeah. Ah, oh, there's a whole penalty. 
Yeah. And that, that bump. What was the feeling there? You go. Uh, um, fear. <laughs> Pure fear and anxiety. Yeah. Um, so your stomach dropped? Stomach dropped, yeah. Stomach dropped and just like reading the email was like, oh, crap. This is, um, I knew that day one was really important for me. Um, going into day two, it was damage control. So to see that and be, and have such a huge penalty, I was just confused. I was like, what am I meant to do here? That was meant to be the uh, event that kind of projected me inside that top 30 and held me for damage control before like getting a, a good crack at event five. So it was just, it was just fear and a lot of, um, a lot of, I guess, comp day like emotions to try and figure out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and how did you feel, Ben? Um, I got mine at like 5.45 on Sunday morning. Right. So I, w- I wasn't aware until I woke up Sunday morning and I looked at my score and I'm like, oh my God, I'm in 29th. Yeah. So I dropped from 13th to 29th and I was like, oh God. Oh dear. <laughs> and um, yeah, it put me in a pretty bad mood. So I responded to them, sent them an email and then I think I... What did you write in that email? I can't remember. My, How long was it? My, it wasn't long. My first email wasn't good, which was a bad thing. I shouldn't have sent it. It was just like, hey, what's going on? Like, what happened? What are you looking for? But yeah. then I, at midday on Sunday, I sent them a much more coherent email and went like, I've watched this. I've reviewed this. This is what I'm seeing. What are you seeing? Where is your score coming from? This is what I think I deserve. Where do we stand? And so then they went, they responded back the next, that night or something saying your review is under submission. We'll get back to you. I responded to that saying, thank you. I really appreciate you guys letting me know. Cause it's like, at the end of the day, they're busy. They're under the pump. I can only imagine the stress they're under, but it's still just like, can we have a sense of humility? Like it's my fuck up. Yeah. And then, so I got an email back, I think Monday morning saying it had been reduced to a minor penalty. Because I was able to argue my point. That's awesome news. And, and I, the feeling there? Oh, it was relief. Like I went from Monday morning, I think sun, Sunday night I was in 29th and I woke up Monday morning in 24th. Yeah. And then my penalty got removed and I bumped 18th. Wow. Yeah. So it was like, it was just a fucking weekend of like up and down and up and down. And I'm like, this, this is, I don't, can this just end? Yeah. I just wanted to know. Yeah. And so, as soon as I heard that, it was a reminder for me that I'm like, oh, you, Jack, you've got to remember that getting a quality video and making sure that the judge can see everything and that I've measured everything properly yeah. and the video is like, and I'm showing my standards well and I've set everything up right, is literally just as po- important as yeah. doing the workout and doing the workout yeah. well. Mm. So like, take that extra time, like be a bit of a nerd at the start and be like, hold on, hold on. I know I need time. And like, say someone's about to call 10 seconds. Like, no, stop, hold on. Like, I need, I need time. Yeah, and, I agree. Yeah. I've never taken that super seriously because I'm like, well, I'm not cheating. Like, here's the standard. Here's this. Like, I'm doing the weights, but it's like, no, actually showing it and holding the camera on the tape measure and pausing it. And it's like, is it focused? Yeah. Can they clearly see? Because it's like, I can imagine there's people around the world that aren't doing the right thing and they want to pick them up, which is fantastic. It's a big sport. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, like you said, it's just like taking that time to actually do things properly. Yeah. Because then you avoid this nightmare that's like... Yeah. And it, and it does look like, which kudos to CrossFit, they're actually checking all of the stand, like mm, all of the standards and yep. all of the events yep. versus previously they might only check like one or two yep. and check it if they had suspicion or you're inside the top 10 of a certain workout. But now they're checking every single score and I'm loving that. Yep. I'm loving that. Me too. Yeah. It yeah. makes it way more valid. Yeah. yeah, way more fair. And then when you hold to the standard, you feel better about it because you're yeah. like, oh, I'm like in the past there, I had this little feeling of like, man, I'm sort of slowing down whilst people are like just killing it. I remember uh, there was a, a specific event and uh, like I'll name someone here. It was Zeke Grove and there was like ring dips and you had to turn out. It was at ACC and he just tore 21 reps. Like th- there was just, there was minimal lockout, there was minimal turnout. And I remember being on the floor and my judge just being like, just hounding me for it and just being like, like turn out and like making me pause every single rep. And I'm just like, I'm just like... I, and I would just watch the next event. I mm. couldn't believe the discrepancy in judging. And, and I'm just like, man, this makes me feel like my feelings towards the sport like change when that happens. I'm like, yeah. man. But to have all the videos actually be reviewed, people have like scores reviewed on like like live during the competition is really good to see. I'm sorry it happened to you guys. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm, I was, it was like, I was like, whoa, okay. They're actually really taking this like no, more serious like, this year. Mm. They've upped to the level. Like, I don't know. Your, your guys probably DMs. They're probably fill, filled with like, Fuck, the Liverpool's brutal out there. Are you guys DMs yeah. for all that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mine, mine too. People are messaging me. Hunger like, Games, man. 
<laughs> it's Hunger Games out there. It's a survivor. Yeah, it is. <laughs> just, just keep it's taking really them out, man. Keep, like. keep taking them out. Yeah. Break a leg. Get them. <laughs> Bring that dog out. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's good. it is bringing the dog out, which is good. But um, to just to wrap on that, I guess, um, Lucas, like, do you feel like the the penalty was fair though? Ah, uh, look. The if I'm if I'm thinking now, like like you need to have a black and white. And it does sound like they've made it black and white. So, you know what? You've had a huge amount of reps that can, or at least a certain amount of reps that can be counted as no reps. You just get the major penalty. 15%, it's been added onto the score. How many reps were no reps? I'd say around 20. It'd yeah. be 20 to 24 squats that are pretty much no reps. Yeah. Yeah. And, th- and it was just due to like slightly not was, straightening your knee, right? It's so slight. And like mm-hmm. not yeah. just slightly like a centimeter away from hip extension. It, like it, It's like, it's actually half and half because sometimes it's like I'm getting knee extension but my hips are out. Yeah. And then sometimes my hips are there but my knees are out. Yeah. And so it's just a... It's just a result of trying to go fast. Like in my mind, I'm squatting and I'm squeezing something. I'm just like, squeeze and drop, squeeze and drop. This is your event, baby. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. And then just, and then like you look back at the video and it's obvious. Like you can see it. It's a, it's a slight, it's slightly there. And so I look at that and I'm like, all right, yeah, cool. It, it makes sense. But then if I like look at the score difference, 75 seconds, if it, it would take me half a second to lock that squat out. Not even. Not even half a second. Yeah. And this is the email I sent back to him, which was probably a lot um, worse than Ben's. Maybe the reason I got the major penalty. I started with, hey, cracker asses, how dare you try to tell me that I can't squat? I'm offended. And frankly, <laughs> I'm thinking about a lawsuit. Not actually what I said, but I just basically went back with, hey, look, it would have taken me, I'm, I'm curious on how everything is rolling on your end. Um, what are you guys seeing? Very transparent and just trying to understand. Yeah. And then coming back with, look, even if you were to give me a penalty for every single one of those squats and you were to give me a, what, it's half a second to lock out a rep and you gave me a one second penalty, that's only 45 seconds. Where is this coming from? What have you actually discussed as a penalty? And is it a, is it a percentage thing? Are you going off reps? Where has this come from? They came back with the whole, hey, it's a major penalty. Look in this section, black and white about it, 15%. If it was wow. 45 seconds difference, I'd be sitting in a much uh, less stressful spot right now, which yeah. is be nice. Yeah. But I can look at that and respect, all right, look, if you're going to call it a major penalty, then I just hope that you're doing it to everyone else. Carol messaged me and said she hasn't been sleeping well. <laughs> <laughs> Carol's no. my judge. Carol, Carol is um, she she's taking a bit of a role at underway. Like she's really she she does the judges course every year. She yep. puts herself on the line. She's, she's our there rock. at every we, event. We wouldn't she's, be able to do what we do without Carol. No, nah, no, nah. she is our rock. Yeah, she and she has the tape when no one else has the tape. She also has the score sheets when mm-hmm. no one else has score. She sheets. has standards we didn't even know about. Yeah. <laughs> No, exactly. Yeah. She reminded us not to wear grips on the deadlifts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> she told me to face the right way. Yeah. Yeah. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without Carol. She's a legend. Yeah. She's an absolute legend. Um, yeah, she's helped me out heaps in the past before too. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, I did my quarterfinals at Frankston this year. I've been training with the Frankston crew. Um, I've been uh, getting coached under Rob Forte. And um, yeah, I've just been training with um, uh, people that are essentially better than me, which has, you know, been huge for my development this year. Um, you know, but, but part of me was sad because I'm like just watching Instagram, seeing the boys like tear it up. I'm like, oh, I miss my boys, man. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah. no offense, but you missed out. We We're having fun. such a fun time. I, I have... <laughs> I, I'm, I have absolute clarity that I was in the right position where I am and I'm, mm. do, I'm making the right moves. Yep. Um, but yeah, like just, you know, even it's just my box and not just being there to support mm. my box. Like, but you guys, you guys held the flag high, you know, solidly over the weekend, which was cool to see, which actually made me feel better. Um, so yeah, it, thanks boys. That was awesome. Um, but yeah, it would have been good to just been thrown down together. Um, but Carol, Carol has helped me out heaps in the past before and yeah, so I'm I'm on that Carol train too. Thank you. So uh, yeah. Carol's she not sleeping. Sleep. She's not sleeping. She couldn't sleep. She's oh. like, I messaged her and I'm like, because I was talking about my deadlifts, like, because my deadlifts were like borderline lockout, yeah. 
And um, you know when it's a front angle and it's just Josh Bridges deadlifts. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You got that him in your mind after he got no reps a few years ago, and she's like not sure, and she's like, oh, and and then I send Rob. Rob's like, eh, not sure. And then I woke up in the morning. My first email was workout five has been validated. I'm oh. like, I'm like, Ooh. I'm like, oh yeah, because we're like, it was six p.m. on Sunday night. Yeah. I'm in bed. I've showered. It's all done. We're celebrated. I've had schnitz, the double schnitzel, large chips. Actually gave the chips to Cairns, didn't eat the chips, watching my figure. Um, and good. I'd celebrate, I was done. I'm yeah. like, sweet, done what I can. But then I watched the video back and I'm like, starting to sweat because I think I'm going to go back in to the gym mm. and do this workout again. Like, um, I was so close to doing it. I go, you know what? Worst case, I get the major penalty and I still think that I'll be inside the top 30. So I'm just going to let it go and I'm just going to, just is what it is. Yeah. Um, so that's that's where I got to. Um, but yeah, the, the penalties this year, I, I I don't think your penalty was fair, Lucas. And I don't think it was fair because 20 no reps, you're right. The, the slight lockout to get a little bit more, you have to follow the rules at the end of the day and, and they could argue that the reps weren't completed. Um, I understand that side, but I think 75 seconds for 20 reps that slightly weren't rocked it, locked out, which is like maximum. It's not 45. Like mm. it's, it's 20 seconds. Like it's a 20 second penalty. Like yeah, that would be like the best case scenario. I'd be like, yeah, okay, no, fair enough. That's cool. Um, even as an athlete that's competing against Lucas, I'd be like, yeah, cool. But I'm, I am someone's competing against him and don't think 75 seconds was fair. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, to be in your position, um, yeah, it w- I can imagine it would be challenging right now. Um, yeah, especially like the fact that you're sitting in thirty first. You two, were you were in thirty fourth though. There's right? there has been a lot of uh, change two, in two points. Yeah, you were you were in thirty fourth. Yeah. Well, do you want the, the story is right. So we've uh, we finished up in thirty third. So 33rd was my final place in as of Sunday. Uh, it is done and dusted. Bam. And then just slowly, people have been dropping like flies, and I've actually knuckled into 31st as of last night with a total of eight points difference between me and 30th. And as of uh, 5.55 a.m. this morning when I checked, I'm two points out. <laughs> it's two points, and we, we don't know. Is it, I don't think there's a date that they'll say I don't things know. Have been I thought it was by. Thursday. I've heard Monday. Yeah. I don't know. My scores are still not verified. I've got one video to go. Yeah, so... You've had four videos verified. Yeah. I've yeah. been waiting for three. I've had three, yeah. So I think um, I, I think that there's... You're telling me there's a chance. Uh, there's a chance. still a chance. Just a slight chance. There's yeah. a chance. Like one yeah. in a million? You're telling me there's a chance. No, nah, it's not even one in a million. It's like, I reckon right now, if I were to put a number on it, 20% chance we're going to see Lucas go. I one reckon, in five. I reckon 80%. That's five. I'm confident. Yeah, I'm stressing. Don't get me wrong. I want it so bad. I want it so bad. <laughs> I'm glad you're confident, bro. I'm but stressing. Luke is stressing. Yeah. It's oh, hard, it's a hard seat to sit in. That's why they gave me the big chair today. You know. You know how. Oh, thank you very much. But you know how, like Instagram. If, I don't know if you've ever tried to log out of Instagram, and it's a really good slap to the face because you log out with the intention of I'm not going to go back in until I need to, and you'll open that up. You open that app and see that login page like 15 times unconsciously. And it just, it smacks you. I've looked at that CrossFit website, that leaderboard, at least 15 times. Just open it up and I'm like, oh, yep, still two points. Oh, yep, that's two was, points. Was anyone else waking up for like Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night at 2 a.m. waiting for them to update the leaderboard? Yeah. No, it wasn't going to be updated until 7 a.m. You knew it wasn't until that time, but you'd check it at 5 a.m. Yeah. I was like, I didn't sleep. You have a I'd problem. i just wake up, roll over, look, and just go back to sleep. I'm like, yeah, it hasn't changed yet. I wonder why. <laughs> I did. I was exactly. Yeah. I would just wake up like, <laughs> and then and I'd be like, yeah, I'll just have a look just in case they change things yeah. overnight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I want to see, I want to see what's going on. Yeah, um, yeah, loop me in. So no, I was or just you, you wake up with an email from HQ, and it's just your email being validated, but all you see is the sub, the, <laughs> like the subject, and it's HQ, and you're just like tremoring, looking at the email, like, <gasps> yeah. Checking the leaderboard before you check the email to make sure you haven't moved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I've just, I've been over my score. My email is pretty chill. I've been, I'm pretty laxed. Yeah, yeah. wait till you get a penalty. Yeah, just messes with you, man. Two more. If I get no, a penalty, you'll no, you'll be good. Well, not, yeah. If get I get, one. if I got two penalties, that'd be no, bad. You're not getting one. You're good. The videos look pretty good. You're so. good. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, yeah. We, we've spoken about two workouts here. 
Um, were there any were any big outliers uh, in any of your other guys' workouts? Um, I guess sorry about event. The event five was when we needed to qualify. Mm. So on the Tuesday before we started, so quarters starts on Friday. On the Tuesday, I was on a rope climb and like tweaked my pec. And right. I was like, came, like, reaching out the rope, went to climb, and I was like, oh, that didn't feel good. So I like, torn my pec a number of times, know what it feels like. I'm like, that's not good. Come down, can't do a push up, can't do a ring dip, can't do a pull up. Wednesday, still can't do the same thing. Thursday, get some treatment, starting to come good. And then the workout gets announced with rope climbs, and I'm like, ah, crap. So on <clears throat> Sunday, I'm sitting in 29th, and I'm like, I've got one shot at this workout because my pec's not feeling great. I can't rope climb without pain. Um, I think I get to like five reps and I feel it start to go again. And I'm like, you've got four more. Like, just get up the damn rope. You see me in the video just like holding it over, just holding it. So I finish the workout. I message Luke straight away. I'm telling my time. He's like, oh man, you might have to redo this. Like, I don't know if that's going to be good enough. And I'm like, shit, like I can't lift my left arm over my head. Like, it's not happening. And then he messaged me an hour later. An hour later, He's like, the other boys have done it. I think you're okay. Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> Good, because I can't, thanks, Luke. I can't <laughs> move my left arm, so I'm not redoing it. <laughs> like, and he's like, oh, good. Okay, sweet. Uh, yeah. But like, yeah, that's that's my little story for the week. What was your time? Uh, 5.37, I think. 5.38. Yeah. It was good. Lucas and I were well second done. apart. We, we, and we did it with Rob Watt. And we just, we fucking ripped it. Like, I don't think I could have gone any faster. I look back at the video, I'm like, man, I rested a bit too long in between. But in the moment, like, we, we flew. We felt like we were flying. Yeah. So... Awesome. And it was just like, all of us were around that bubble. So it was just like, we just got to give this thing everything we have. And I knew I had one shot at it. Yeah. So, yeah. It was good. It was good to just... And so what were you sitting going into that? 29th. 29th. Okay. All right. So you had to... Yeah. Yeah. And that was... I was waiting to hear back from my... Uh, from contesting the penalty. <clears throat> so I hadn't heard back. And I was just in my mind, I'm like, you're not winning the penalty. It's going to stay as it is. Like, this mm-hmm. is your time to just do this workout and punch your ticket. Yeah, right now. So were you nervous before that workout? I was shitting myself. Like anyone there was like, "Man, he looks grumpy." I was, I was. <laughs> out of uh, out of curiosity, there was a moment. Mm. There was a moment. Um, so just as we're about to start the workout, we've all g'd up. We've been warming up for a while. And stresses are high. Mm. Nerves Stressful. are high. And on the call of 10 seconds, we G'd up. Myself, Rob Watt, Ben Newland, stand in, in person for the first time. Like we've been talking about all weekend. We've been trying to meet up. Just schedules did not happen. But finally, three of the best looking athletes in the same room about to go. 10 seconds. And we're all looking, we're getting ready. We get our comp stairs on. And then we just start hearing like, seven seconds. And someone else is saying, five seconds. And I'm like, wait, what a sec. Wait, I'm looking at Keels. She's not looking at me. I'm like, Keely, am I going? And then someone's like, four, three. And then someone else is telling Rob, seven, six. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Two, one. Ben races out. I start to race out. Rob's still there. I'm like, wait, stop, stop. And Ben, <laughs> so false start. Full start, Rob's like, oh, you dick. I look at Ben and I saw pure anger. <laughs> I thought he was going to kill me. I, I've never seen malice in this man's face. I've never seen intent to kill. But this man looked like he could turn around and snap my neck at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> Am I reading that wrong? <laughs> yeah, I was just focused on the workout. I, was, I get like, I just go somewhere else when I need to. And yeah. just like, you just tap into something else. And there's nothing as Bullshit. <laughs> I felt it. I know Come on, I tell felt. us. Tell no, us, I was, Benny. I was just... Give it to us. What were you thinking when you were looking at, at Lucas? What, what do you think he... What was he going on about? Nothing. Why do you yell stop? No, nothing. Like, if, like, in that moment, when that happens, it's like, if you get angry, like, why? It's happened. I went and reset my camera and just you've, walked back to the start line. So you you've obviously thought about you this. Self talk your way out of like, it. No, no, I was just like, cool. This is reset, and this just like switch back on. Oh, I don't know. It. Someone that's switch thought about it this from much where? is angry. From where? From yeah. <laughs> no, it was like because we had to like calm down a bit, go and get fix the camera. Like, oh, so you were change angry. Change the settings. So you were a little bit steamy. No, right. I was just ready to go for the workout. No, yeah, I, I was bet. just like on. And then that energy was like transferred into focus on Lucas. No, I didn't, and no, so at I that did point in time, about Lucas. what were you thinking? Not at, I did not think about Lucas for one moment. Okay. No, nah, it was just it was literally like I was watching Cam. He was my like little buzzer. Oh, so you were angry at Cam? Down. Wasn't angry at Cam. Um, and then that happened and it was just like, cool, reset, start the camera and then just go straight back into 
workout mode. Yeah. It was just happened so quick. Yeah. I think I think I was resetting my camera and Rob's like, come on, Ben, hurry up. And I nearly said something like, it's your fucking fault. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like, nah. Nah. <laughs> Focus. So was it a wadproof issue? No, I have no idea. Like, did someone... Are you guys using Wadproof? We're using Wadproof, And then, yeah. so, like, you guys just had the five-second timer, and then yeah. you, and then you, yeah. you touch it. Someone would have just hit theirs. Someone would have hit theirs before, because you wait they weren't for the person to count you in. Yeah. They weren't in sync. And yeah. I think part of what we wanted to do as the workout was all be in sync, so we're all moving together. Yeah. But, um, I don't know, it just happened, and shit like that happens. There's no, like, no point in getting angry at things you can't control. Yeah. It just happens, and I was just pissed off in general that morning oh so there was some anger hmm. yeah i was just pissed off in general had nothing to do with anyone <laughs> yeah <laughs> had to do with the fact i could know my range of motion so yeah i, yeah, came, I yeah. came in day two angry yeah, yeah. oh yeah for, for good reason for good I just, reason i came in mad yeah yeah i was i was hitting 45th coming mm. into day two it's heavy yeah good comeback and um and yeah 45th to 9th is pretty good yeah thanks boys <laughs> thanks fellas um should have just gone 45th at first just saying but I should have. Oh, yeah. I tried, but like I obviously um, not hard enough. It was like uh, I was I was channeling that anger into like focus and into like all right, what have I got to do? Because like obviously, what, there's something you didn't do yesterday that you should have done, and like those those scores aren't representative of your fitness right now, and you know that, so you need to come in and change something. Like mm. what's going on? Yeah. Like had a little chat with myself. Like Jack, yeah. sit down. Let's have a little chat. Yeah. What's going on, buddy? Yeah. Because was it in the mirror? Were you looking in the mirror? No, it was. It was what I did was I started to do some of the practices I do prior to workouts. I, I like to meditate. I like to journal. I like to I like to write out the workout. I like to um, I like to analyze what I'm going to do or have a roundabout idea of what I'm going to do. I like to visualize it. I like to go through these things. I went into day one a competition, and what went wrong? Number one is I came in. I raced. I, should, I shouldn't have been racing. That first workout, I came out too heavy, too hot, way too hot. I'm like, Jay got like one of the best times in the world for that workout. I was on par with him until like halfway through. And then... What did it drop? And about halfway through, like muscle ups. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, it was like, we, didn't, we did the handstand walks and then he got off the squats quicker than me and then I was like breathing, I was gassed. And then me and Pete Ellis got to the handstand push-ups at the same time. He finished two minutes faster than me. I've never had my handstand push-ups blow up that much. I'm good at handstand push-ups. They're probably a strength of mine. Mm. I could not believe what happened. I was like, I just can't push. Mm. I just can't. And it's like I didn't even I wasn't even doing like the arch thing. That's like my biggest coaching cue I use all the time. I just went into this mode of like, I'd been feeling adrenaline from like Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and like, so you have that build up. I'm just I'm just staying present eating my food, doing the things I'm going to do, I'm um, getting good sleep, um, you know, I'm, I'm keeping my BO in order, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing normal human things. Yep, yep, yep. And, and then essentially I came in on Friday and I was just revving, ready to go. So I think um, like day one thing, I just got to make sure that I do those um, pre-event uh, practices that I like to do. I need to think about um, not not what anyone else is doing and really just focus and hone in on what I need to do um, is what I'd say. And then, so that's event one. And then event, event two, I uh, literally just, uh, again, underestimated it, didn't practice it enough. I was just like, she'll be right. Hmm. And, and yeah, I was she, like, she, she was right. not right. She was and, not right. And <laughs> she was left. <laughs> <laughs> and so I would just, I should have practiced a bit more and, and you know, so be it. Um, so I came in, uh, on Saturday ready to go. So, but it was a good lesson for me cause I know I'm not going to let that happen at touring this year. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Question for, for you, my friend. Yeah. Um, how was the open at Frankston? Like different environment Quarters? for you. Yeah. Quarterfinals. Sorry. Um, how was quarterfinals at Frankston? Very competitive environment. Um, fresh environment. I know you've been training there, but you haven't been doing quarters there for previous years. So how was that whole new experience? Scary. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I found like, um, you know, I was in an environment that I wasn't necessarily comfortable in. And I find that that's the general vibe for me uh, when I uh, go down there and just train. Anyways, I train there four days a week. Train scared? I do. I do. Um, and yeah, but that keeps me like, um, it keeps me in that mindset of 
uh, what Torian's like. And um, after that first day, like after that first workout, it just, every workout got better and better and better. And I, I can like humbly say it was the best I'd ever competed by the last event. It just got better and watching everyone, uh, debriefing with those people. Um, yeah, just, just um, uh, I don't know, just something about it uh, not being at my gym and not like, like I was, I was just off the tape measures, you know. I'm like, I was off the tape lines. I'm staying mm. like, I'm like, you not got, having to organize like, you, anything. You got it, boys. You're doing a great job. I'm like, um, I put on that post. I'm like, how many, how many crosses did it take to tape a line? It was like 11 <laughs> people. I'm like, I'm good. I don't need to like. Everyone's trying to help, and I'm like, I'm happy not to be helping. Um, I'm just gonna focus on what I gotta do. I'm like, is my tripod all good? Sweet. <laughs> One. Too. Yeah, I'm like Rob. Where do you want me to stand? I'm like, where is it again? Um, yeah. So um, yeah, I found I found the environment awesome, and and it's also like um, like competing here in the past. I've been someone that um, is I'm I'm usually the person getting chased when I'm here, and so to be there and not not to have a moss workouts here or you know the the competition isn't fierce. It really is. But the thing is, is I'm getting beaten in most of the workouts there and I'm chasing and that, and that creates a very different energy for me. And it makes me, I, I'm not used to that. So I'm learning that and I'm getting used to that. And so like, that's the energy at Torium. I'm usually chasing. So to, to have that and practice that in my training grounds is, has been phenomenal. Um, so, um, yeah, I, that's probably, that's probably how I'd say it, but it was good. Like it was chill. Like. Fuck, fuck, Peter Ellis is funny. <laughs> like, he's hilarious. He just says it how it is. You and gotta, he's, yep. You've got to get him on the podcast. He, you do. But, and he's just, he's just a tornado. Like, he just comes in, he's just like, Whoa, what's up, I'm here. Like, I've had three scoops of pre-workout, I'm ready. <laughs> like, <laughs> I haven't even warmed up. Yeah, yeah, uh, he's a legend. Um, watching Jay, watch how he does stuff. Like, just, just very sharp, very awesome to see um you know how he does things and and yeah he's just an absolute legend he's he's the goat cross at the moment he came second though ricky got him big dick rick got him mm. <laughs> yeah so um big nah. battle at torin <laughs> yeah yeah 100 percent um that nah, it'll be good jay fires up at torin so yeah he competes better than anyone i've seen just like doesn't make mistakes at torin yeah at torin and down under and down under, but the games yeah. is is like the next level for him. And I can see, yeah, him like, he, he's, he's got to rise to the occasion on the games. Um, yeah, that's his thing. And, and that'd be hard for him. Like, you know, that's the, go, I can't imagine, like, I'm like, I, like, for me, when I, if I were to make qualify for the games this year, I'd just be skipping and laughing because I'm there, <laughs> right? And, but when I go to touring, I'm like, I've got, I'm like, I'm taking this Which, serious. I don't want to do worse than last year. I've got to try and make it. So like you know, I don't just want to be that complacent athlete that's just doing the same every year and what just if we enjoying just, like, being a touring. Spanner in the works and was like, what if you went to touring and you're just like skipping and having fun? Um, well, yeah, that's it's it's like by the end of the workout and quarters this weekend, mm. that's what it started to feel like. Yeah, yeah. So I think the touring is going to be a very different year for me this yeah. year. Because I, like, I reckon you compete better. <clears throat> I reckon most people compete better when there's no any pressure on themselves to perform. Yeah, just relax, have fun. Yeah, and that's an organic process. Mm. Like you know, it's unfortunately, sometimes like sometimes that's out of your control. You're gonna feel how you're gonna feel. You're gonna process feelings how you're gonna feel them, and um, you know, you can only look back on those events and then like learn, think about how you're going to change how you're feeling and process those emotions. So, yeah, um, yeah I'm um I'm excited for touring this year. Yeah, yeah. I I had a big chat with myself. I, I like to sit down and have a chat with myself. And one of them, the chats I had was like, actually, I just want to enjoy it. I just want to have fun. You know when it's so much pressure and you're so nervous, it's not fun anymore? Well, you don't know when... Do you guys a... ever feel that? Yeah, you don't know when it's going to be your last time. So yeah, you that's just it. remind yourself to get on the floor and look around and have fun and enjoy it. And that's something that helps you. the crowds and... Oh, I something I was doing is again on the floor and look in the crowd and wave at people, wave at Anna and mm. like smile. And then like when we we're on a team at Down Under, it was just like soak up every moment of being on the floor. Have fun because you never know when it's going to be your last time. And it makes it so much, so much better. Yeah. yeah, like how can you enjoy every little moment of every event rather than one of these is going to hurt? Like, yeah, they're all going to be uncomfortable, but there's so many moments that happen around that that you miss out on. Mm. So like enjoy those. You can always get like a second wind. Yeah. Like yeah. there's times where I'm like, oh my God, my world is caving in. Yeah. It's getting dark. Yeah. And I look up and there's Tracy Clark with the biggest smile. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I fucking love 
you. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I, I feel like there's definitely some second wins if you can like yeah. just take yourself out of that that pain and pressure and just again, yeah, absorb yeah. absorb the environment. I remember having a conversation with an old mentor of mine, Matt Swift, and it was before touring in 2018, <clears throat> and I was like training real hard, stressing on it. And he was just, he noticed that and he's, he's really good at these conversations. And he went to me, he's like, mate, regardless of what happens this weekend, you're going to come back in on Monday and you're going to have a job. I don't care whether you come first or come last, you have a job and I'm going to expect the same of you. Your girlfriend's still going to love you. Your parents are going to love you. Um, all the members here are going to respect you. You're still going to be able to go fishing on the weekend. You're still going to be able to train. He's like, regardless of what happens on the weekend, nothing of actual importance in your life will change. So when he told you that lie... How did you feel when you, you know, had reality slap you on the face? When he told me that, it was great. It was like, it just took away the significance that I was putting on this thing that didn't matter. It's like, yes, it matters because it might help you with sponsorships and it solidifies your training, but it's the, it changes your perspective. It's like, it's actually therefore thinking that way and acknowledging that all the actual things that are really, really important, which is like your relationships and the people in your life and your job, things like that, isn't going to change regardless of what happens. So you can actually go out and perform because mm. you take that pressure off yourself mm. and since doing that and since remembering that I've always competed so much better mm -hmm. so. yeah that's awesome yeah to feel like it took the pressure off yeah it just took the pressure off it just took the expectation away and I was able to go in and have fun yeah and it makes sense because like you know I know I'm, I've straightened out my priorities this year whereas when I was a younger person they probably weren't as straight in the way that like um, you know family and you know my, myself I'm at the top. If I'm if I'm not looking after myself, I'm not healthy. I'm not mentally well. I'm not good to anyone. I'm mm. not good to anything. I can't. I'm so I'm at the top of my priority list. Friends and family, my job. I need to have an income, and then being an athlete is after that. And so yeah, to have all those things um, still be in order. Um, you know, when I finish the competition, it's definitely like it definitely helps the mindset um, for sure. But for me, at the end of the day, like I still care where I place. I'm still very competitive. I'm still there to be a competitor and compete. I know all that stuff's going to be there. I'd be, I'd, I'd be worried if it wasn't. Um, you know, and so at the end of the day, like it's, I want to learn how to compete and, and feel that competitive energy of wanting to win, but also have fun. Mm -hmm. And also it not be like so much pressure that I crumble and just yeah. like, so um, yeah, I, I, but I think it's a journey and, and I think you, you learn every, every year and, mm. you, and you do by taking it more seriously. That's just a tool I use to relax so I can relax before an event. Because mm -hmm. it's like, I, I still want to win. I get G'd up. You guys beat me in a workout. I'm pissed off. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like, I'm happy. We know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like... But it's like L Lucas knows. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on to it. I'm competitive. I'm really fucking competitive. Like, I'm competitive at uni. It's like, I'm competitive here. I'm competitive with coaching. It's like, you want to be the best at what you're doing. But he's always reminded that I just keep things in perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I suppose it's like you can feel like your cup's not filled when you lose. Yeah. And then it's like actually you, you think about it and you think about things you, you have gratitude for. And yeah. you're like, oh, wait, it like my cup is filled. You keep like I just lost yeah. it. I just yeah. didn't do a workout yeah, how just, I wanted you to. Just and you're like, perspective. Yeah. no worries. Yeah. yeah. Let's okay. move on to the next one. Exactly. Yeah. What do you think, Lucas? Um, what I think about. Over competitiveness, wink, wink. Um, I don't know. I in in terms of like handling pressure and I mean handling loss, actually, probably a better way to put it. Um, I just go back to I, I try to find positives. Like I'm pretty good at going in and just wanting to do like my best. So I don't have this need to go in and have to win everything. If I can go into a workout and do my absolute best go in and do my personal battle with whatever the workout is, as it always takes you into your own personal battle. And I can walk away from that and go, I just conquered that. Like, I overcame it. I was able to push through. I can always come back and be like, good, good job. If I put it onto an external result, whether it's winning or losing, I tend to be a lot more disappointed even if I'm winning. But when I go into a setting of I'm going in to have fun, and I'm going in to do my best. And then the result of that is winning. I'm like, oh shit, go me. Mm -hmm. like, that's, that's wicked. And I, obviously like it helps. Like I am competitive. Don't get me wrong. I am very competitive and I love a good win. I think you have to be to be in the seat. Yeah. Like to, you have to, to be, be to be good at anything. Like, well, you just have to be competitive. You have to want to sacrifice other things to achieve a certain thing. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. But I've just be blase. And I've definitely been a lot better as of um, like later years to flip that competitiveness on myself. You know, like be able to put that into I'm competing with me Mm. and I'm doing my best and not being so um, like there was definitely times in like my teen years when it would be like just trying to compete with people. But do you reckon that's just maturity, like just growing up? You just learn different. You just get more mature. Like I was the Mm. same. But now it's like, I'm sort of probably reiterating what you said, but it's like, if I was to win an event, but I didn't execute, I wouldn't be happy. Yeah. If I come last, but I execute to the best of my ability, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. And people are like, ah, bullshit. It's like, no, like that's where I stand. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, we compete in a sport that's an individual sport. No one else can impact my performance. If I let myself down, I let myself down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I definitely hear um, yeah what both you boys are saying, um, and and yeah, would have to agree with you like that that learning to compete with yourself and and think about how you're executing things, and um, you know that it it's it connects with the point of enjoying the journey and mm-hmm. and the way you do things and the way you're holding yourself and being present in the tasks you're doing and the way you're doing things and it's you know I I think they're separate to the end score though like I think you know I I, I competed at quarters this weekend i can look back at uh three of the workouts and i was really happy with my execution on on them and that's why i enjoyed them and that and that was fulfilling enough for me like as an athlete um and then it's like i step away once the competition's done and i go now what's the actual score how am i actually tracking am i actually getting better is what i'm doing actually working okay no yeah i'm actually not happy with where what, what the score is this year i executed everything perfectly i'm happy as with how i executed things that was so much fun because yeah oh and i broke it i broke it up in the right spot and yeah and i i can see elements of where i've grown but like it doesn't mean at the end of the day i've got to be satisfied in the end result and the end placing and and i think like having a balance of like what you can do better mm. and, and and things you're you know happy about is is where it's at because then it's like all right i'm happy with where i'm at but i'm happy in the way i'm going of course, of course. Mm. Um, to piggyback on that, I think that that's a really, like that's a learnt skill, isn't it? So like, if, you're, if you are complacent, if you're, if you're complacent with where you're at, you're never going to progress. Like there's actually a negative side to being too complacent. And that can be related to a lot of different things. Some people get very complacent in life and don't really see what they could be doing better. Right, And they're the people that maybe can get really overweight, they don't have the best habits set up, they're eating the wrong foods and their health markers go to shit. That is quite literally someone that's going to be quite complacent in a bad spot. Then you have the people that are the polar opposite that are hyper aware of what they could be doing better and it's everything. Everything you can see you can be doing better. And so it's like, it's a learnt skill. For the said complacent person, they need the polar opposite. They need to start learning and maybe even seeing those things of like, all right, I could be better in this area. Now, how do I get there? And it's goal set and everything else. In It's definitely a skill that I've had to work on. Not being, a, being having the ability to have a result happen and not just go into this polarizing um uh, deep dark hole of like oh I could have been doing all of this better and it's such a shit result and I, I, I could have done this part better this part better and ah and, and you take away mm. uh, a lot of genuine growth that could occur and so it almost seems like that is like a maturity thing when you start to learn the skill of going from a hyper competitive point where could I have done better yes but also these are the things I did really well it almost softens the blow so you're not like getting sucked into this tornado of I could be so much better at these things I'm so shit here it just allows you to go all right well yes I need to be doing these things and changing these parts to get this result because results still speak results are results you can't change that um but I think that there is like it is a really a really good learnt skill from a hyper competitive person yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think um, yeah, I couldn't agree more with that, man. And I can definitely think of times in the past where um, yeah, I'll finish a, an event or uh, competing or anything, you know, r- r- running a comp here at the gym, um, you know, ha- ha- like simple things like ha- how I, you know, organized a date for you know Sam and I, th- things like that. 
um, and I'll be like, man, I could, I'm, I'm hyper aware of how I could have done things better, and um, and you know, I, I, it's like I almost feel bad because I'm like, all I can think about is the bad, and so I'm filled with negative energy, and it's like I'm too far that way. And then I've, fi- I've finished things and been like on too much of a high, and I'm just skipping through the daisies, and I'm like. I'm like, yo, like you killed that. You're what you're doing is like, just keep going, do what you're doing, and then I get, I get into a place of being complacent, um, and and finding that, and so it's like that balance between those two worlds of um of like yeah, thinking my my shit's too hot and like having being on an ego trip, and then like being like like self deprecating to the point where I'm like, you know, oh, I just you can't do anything right, and you can't, and I'm and then being in the middle of 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 those two places, I'm. I think is what you're talking about. Mm. Yeah. Um, and is, yeah, uh, I, I'm definitely trying to find that balance on the daily, like just on the daily and you daily know. grind, daily grind. Absolutely. Your yeah. life sounds like a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I feel like nauseous <coughs> thinking about being on that with you. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. There's days I wake up and it's a, and it's a heavy day. It's days I wake up when I feel great. And it's like, are you tall enough to ride? Would Lucas be tall enough to ride your roller coaster? Man. Yeah. You guys, you guys can come ride anytime. No I'm an adult. Uh, um, I mean, no homo, no homo. <laughs> <laughs> all homo. Can you say all, that? All <laughs> I feel. I feel like. I feel like you can say it. I was very yeah. respectable. Mm. Yeah. Um, but mindset is everything, right? It's like yeah. mindset is huge, and so like um, I also find like not thinking about your mindset too much. That's also a thing. It's like you know when you're overthinking your mindset, mm. you're like, be the lion, you be, be the roar. I'm like, <laughs> embody, I'm like, embody. I'm like, dude, chill. I'm like, just fucking deadlift. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hands on the bar, man. Like, no, you don't need the Rocky Balboa speech right now. I'm like, hey, man, can you just play Rocky Four music? Just real quick. I've been, I've been cycling. I've been doing a Rocky Four theme music cycle. <laughs> so can you just hit me with that real quick? <laughs> like, I'm not dun, starting dun, this dun, workout till that dun, music, dun, music dun, song. So dun, 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 I'm happy to go in the next heat. Dun, dun, I'll go in the next heat if you want. I'm, it's all good. You guys don't have to be here. I'll do this by myself. But yeah. I'm on Rocky. Th- I'm on Rocky Four theme. I music. want my seven songs played in this exact order at this exact time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please. <laughs> Admittedly, might have done it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, who skipped my song in the queue? Who did that? I'm just. Everybody, stop what you're doing. <laughs> Very specific. You know to add. Add to the queue. Don't click on your song. <laughs> don't I, be that guy. Yes, that's the thing, right? Mm. Yeah. You gotta to add to the queue. Yeah, especially in the car. Wait like, turn. Especially in the car. Like if you're gonna be in the car and everyone's choosing music, add to queue. Don't click on your song. Don't be an Apple Music person. Add to queue. <laughs> download Spotify and be an adult. All right. <laughs> Sorry, pet peeve of mine. <laughs> right. So you you use Spotify? I'm a Spotify we guy. Talk, you use Spotify yeah. too? Yeah, we use Spotify. Yeah. I didn't think there was another thing. But what about when that person sat down in the car and they've queued ten songs? And you're like, I gotta wait 45 minutes to hear one of my songs. I think you can have a discussion with them. That mm. it is. I think that's yeah. when it's time to appeal. Yeah. yeah. An appeal process yeah. begins. Yeah. Open, yeah. open communication's good. Yeah. That's growth in a relationship yeah. there. It starts Absolutely the conversation. Is. You know, we're, our day is full of relationships. Mm. Communicate way <laughs> through them. <laughs> Hold on, what? <laughs> I didn't take you I've for such a man. Rela- I've got one relationship. Mate, I've got a relationship between you. I've got a relationship between Lucas. Whoa, well, you know, oh, to man. share that publicly, I, right? I, gee, I've oh, got, no, I'm going to sniff that. I'm going to cut that out of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I told knows you about there's it. one thing not to talk about, and you had to bring it up. Mm. Our relationship? Yeah, well, now I'm in trouble. Well, now you're mentioning that it's like a three way relationship, but when is. you said our, now Actually, people know that it's a three way relationship. Well, there's the relationship between you and me, and there's the relationship between me and Lucas, and then there's the relationship between all three of us, and there's the relationship between you and Lucas. Oh, that type of yeah. relationship. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, too. Me, too. Yeah. Yeah. But we're safe about it. Yeah, mm. yeah absolutely. Yeah. You know, we're, um, we're never dangerous. No. Yeah. yeah well, like, we push the limits. Consensual. Like, I drive, I drive in the dark with sometimes no lights on. <laughs> Sometimes I don't indicate. It's because they don't work. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, it's Jessica. Just like you break. No, she's not dead yet. Though. She's not dead yet. She's going strong. Yeah, she's good. She's going strong. She, yeah, good. She's good. just got more lights on the dashboard than she has, like projecting out of her. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's just his Spotify. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh well. Um. Yeah. So basically, um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to go into a little bit of a wrap up and um, and just talk about 
uh, get, we're just going to interview Lucas a little bit, but we're going to have um, the opportunity just to deep dive on Lucas and, and then we'll do the same for Ben. Um, but just prior to us doing that, I thought it might be a good idea just mid-episode to check the leaderboard. How about we just, we oh, just yeah, a, check it out. No, check it out. Let's have a little look. Yeah. Because um, this could either be a beautiful celebration or just a deep, dark depression. All right, let's have a look. CrossFit Games opening up. <laughs> How are we going? <gasps> no. You motherfucker. No. You motherfucker. No. In 31st. Oh, <laughs> you're a dick. <laughs> no, I looked at the points first. He's, he's, dropped, he's lost a point. Yes. Lost he's, a point. He's 251. He was yes. 252. But Wait, so now there's only one point. Now there's three no, points. There's three points. Zach Thomas now there's moved three up. points. Yeah. Mm. 248. Interesting. And Zach lost points. Or is Zach out? No, Zach's still in there. Direction no, no, it's Zach, uh, the only thing that's changed, Zach's exactly in the same position. Zach, I'm coming for you. Uh, Zach's in the exact same position, but I've just gained one extra point. I was two points away. I'm one. I'm three points no, away you're three now. Three points away, yeah. Dang. But on the plus side, I've had a, another validated score. Test four, 510 reps, success. That's good. That's good. That's all we want. It's good. It's green there. This I was is, worried. Uh, yeah. I was like, they're going to get me for those JHD sit ups. <laughs> Oh, not really, not really, but uh, that's worrisome. Like when you have like a, a major score penalty, I'm just looking at all of them and I'm like, th- th- can they get me for anything? Mm-hmm. Like what weird standard are they going to bring out that I didn't know about? Which I should probably just read the standards correctly. Yeah, 100%. All right, yeah. well. So, Lucas. So yes, yes, wh- that's me. So, um, what's your... Um, what's your come up story, man? Give us, start from wherever you like. 1997, I came out of my mum's vagina like an absolute beast. Mm. Some people thought it was going to be like a hard labour, but I came out, like I actually did a pull-up out. I came out, I just hands through, shot out like I was doing a muscle up. At that point in time, I knew that I was into health and fitness. Mm. Strength is the name. Um, what's my come up story? Um, I don't know, if, like necessarily a come up story. I think I just, <laughs> I, I think I just found. Um, I think I just kind of fell into uh, the gym world like any other teenager does, right? Like just trying to understand the world and find my confidence and my place. Um, I've always been like into, I guess. Um, Healthy habits, gymnastics, climbing things, just being a boy, building things, running around a property. And it was actually my brother who, um, he started martial arts and would bring me along. And he was my hero. My brother, Matt, is my, still is my absolute hero. So this dude was doing like martial arts and just being an absolute anime character. You know, he's learned how to use swords and shit. And I'm like, wow, you're so cool. So he'd bring me along to the gym from time to time. I'd get some like, some coaching and then him and my older brother Josh had gone to martial arts and um, I was like, well, I want to go to martial arts. Let me, let me come along and learn how to fight. I can't let them be the ones beating my ass all the time. So thankfully for my mum, I had gone into teens jujitsu, um, teen jujitsu, MMA and learned how to fight. And now for a lot of people would actually think that's very counterintuitive, like, oh crap, Kids learn how to fight now. They're going to start breaking shit. But actually, it turned all of our brotherly um, arguments and all of our family arguments into a role. So we would no longer get vases and smash each other or, like, get sticks and, and do dangerous things. We would now just <coughs> clap hands and try to armbar each other. And the older brothers would always win, unfortunately. Put each other unconscious. No, that's safe. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's controlled unconsciousness. Um, but <laughs> No one ever got unconscious, did they? Uh, yeah, I've been knocked out. I've been uh, by I've been choked out by Josh. Yeah, yeah. Nice, in in the gym though. That's, so. that's hectic. That's great. Um, but that that's show. all of our fights kind of turn into that. And from that environment and finding my confidence and love for movement, that kind of just accidentally turned into CrossFit. As like I started to take training more seriously um, through my teen years. Um, all of our, I think I went up to my coach at the time and I was like, Hey man, I, w- I think I want to fight. Like just the natural progression of martial arts is like you do all of this skill acquisition and it's, it's beautiful. It's so much fun. It's a dance. But then the next step is quite literally you're like, all right, well, for me to progress here, I need to fight. So I asked him, like, what are I going to do? And he's like, all right, well, you, my friend, have to um, do the ultimate conditioning classes. You need to get fit. You need to be ready for a fighting situation and you need to put yourself in the, um, in the dirt, basically. 
And so I started hitting these ultimate conditioning classes, but so happens that all of the coaches went and got their level ones. And then they all turned into what ultimate conditioning was turned into CrossFit. Oh, the, CrossFit level ones. CrossFit level ones. Yeah. So they, they just pretty much turned that class into like, all right, well, CrossFit's like the ultimate of conditioning tools. One, two, you're getting like all of these compound lifts that are bound to help these fighters. Let's make a CrossFit. So naturally I just start doing all of these lifts and I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, I'm doing some really cool movements. I'm learning new skills. And most of all, I'm not getting punched in the face. I think this might be the one for me. And so I just kind of took off with it at that point. Um, That's a good selling point for CrossFit actually. Yeah. Not getting punched in the face. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's the people say it's a dangerous sport. Yeah. But yeah. It's, we don't punch you in the face. Yeah. You don't no. Take a hit. No, we might throw a skip in right at you, but you she'll be right. You did that yourself. You did that to yourself. The moment you stuffed up those double unders or disappointed us, you deserve to have that rope thrown at you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, So I kind of just, I took off with CrossFit and from there, I think I just saw it, uh, like literally, I do remember this um, like it was yesterday. There was a photo or a video, sorry, of Rich Fronin doing a clean and jerk event, I think in like 2013 or 14. And it was like that clean and jerk ladder. And I was oh, like, yeah, 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 that dude looks insane. With Lucas Parker. Lucas Parker? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, that dude looks insane. What is he doing? And everyone's like, this is the CrossFit Games. And I was like, oh, sweet. Rich Froning is the goat. The goat. Yeah. The goat. But that specific video, I remember, is just kind of like um, what just took me on this path i was like all right we're gonna um we're gonna do mass crossfit and like any teenager with a, a really bad addiction i just started going to crossfit like five hours a day i'd go martial arts crossfit more martial arts fitness go to the gym do some rowing do some bench press and i was like this is my life now and haven't looked back <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah yeah oh, that's awesome yeah yeah um, but that's, that's kind of how I got into, um, into health and fitness or like, like kind of found, uh, CrossFit or just found movement in general. I quite literally was just that kid that, um, wasn't that confident, um, but was just very loud and outgoing. I enjoyed a good time and everyone else was just going out and drinking and drinking's fun, but I figured I'd probably have to like match that with some healthy habits and the fact that I could go to the gym work out like crazy and then at the time go out and drink until the late AMs come back with two hours sleep and just go to the gym and train again I was like oh yeah I'm actually like I'm doing you know both ends of the both ends of the spectrum I'm being healthy balance yeah yeah um actually had a bit of a setback so when I started CrossFit I ended up getting a shoulder injury from all of that dumb training the uh five hours of bench press Mm mm-hmm and that led me to kind of pull away from some original life plans. It's actually how I got into coaching, but I hurt my shoulder and what had happened was it was in a rugby tackle and there was a, there was a bundle of different things that kind of occurred or in the lead up that I didn't really take into consideration. Originally it was just the impact, but went and got some MRIs and, um, some MRIs, some scans, and just saw multiple specialists. And throughout this process, ended up having two surgeons tell me, hey, bro, you're uh, never going to do any hard labouring for the rest of your life. So this dream of yours to be a plumber... <coughs> bullshit. Very bullshit. But this dream of yours being a plumber, sorry, mate, you can't do labouring. Bless you. <laughs> and... <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> after, after that, um, had a, so the two surgeons kind of just basically going, like, dude, you are never doing any hard labor for the rest of your life. And I was That's like... crazy. Shit. All right, well, How this sucks. I was 16. Very impressionable. Like, you probably Very. believed them. Yeah, I believed every minute of it. I, um, the gym was my, my escape. The gym was my place to be. And that was then taken away. Like, what am I, I going to do? So it was a really dark time, but... Luckily, I had a more enthusiastic coach that was like, dude, we can figure this out. Like there are people that have come back from so much worse than this. And he sent me a video of a parachuter or a, um, he was a, basically someone who jumped out of planes and just jumped one too many times and couldn't walk anymore. He's like just the impact of him catching on the floor had um, done something to his spine where he was told he would never walk for the rest of his life. <laughs> And this particular video um, basically shows him adopting yoga into his practices and just trying to do things. 
And the video is just him progressively going from pretty hilariously shit at yoga, falling over and he's injured. So it's not something to really take as a funny video, but throughout the video and he progresses, he actually just ends up doing all of these crazy things. Like he starts doing a handstand. He can support himself on his leg. He starts walking and then just randomly cuts. And he's like, the doctor said I would never run for the rest of my life. And now he ditches the stick. He starts walking and then he just takes off and starts sprinting. And then I was like, okay, that's badass. There's hope. And throughout that whole process, I ended up um, finding some really cool people along my journey. This is actually how I got into coaching. Um, Started to just fix my shoulder and learn about things and then ended up meeting a bunch of cool people who helped me rehab it along the way. And then out of nowhere, I was suddenly doing like 100 kilos over my head in a clean and jerk. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck? There's no pain here. Mm. And suddenly like all of those um, aspirations of competing and moving started to come back. And there was a real passion that was driven into me of like, there was literally these two adults, like professionals in the field that told a 16 year old boy that you were never going to do any hard laboring or training for the rest of your life. How fucking dumb are those guys? Well, that's powerful, man. That's powerful. And like, I don't know any better. And then at the time, like you don't know this, but surgeons don't get paid until they get you on the table and cut you open. So for a lot of them, they're just trying to push you in and maybe they don't see the gym world and what rehab can actually do, but it just like opened my eyes on how much people can be, um, how impressionable people are and how they can be told one thing and think that they're never going to walk for the rest of the rest of their life. They're never going to do certain things for the rest of their life because they've been told to. And through that journey, I gained a lot of different experiences in coaching other people. And I was just like, this is actually amazing. I'm not, you know, on the tools and basically around a bunch of people smoking and drinking at 6 a.m. in the morning, you know, plus. And I'm around people where I can actually be, be along for a journey where my information and my experiences are able to help someone change their life for the better. And throughout that experience and just overall everyone meeting heaps of people, it's kind of taken me where I am today, just competing and having a good time and being able to effectively um, help people or at least be there along the journey whilst people change their lives. It's pretty fucking cool. That was beautiful, man. That was my monologue. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That's, that was uh, like, that was like, you had me up, down. You had, there was a conspiracy in there at yeah, one point. That yeah. was, I could feel that. Yeah. Mm, fuck mm. the medical conspiracies. Mm. Yeah, big farmer, big farmer. Yeah, mm. um, but yeah, that's uh, that's my story. No dragons or anything, but that's uh, that's how I started. No, yeah, you, you've had a cool come up, and I think it's interesting. Just you know, quick side note on that is that you you know the effect injuries can have on your, on mm. your passion and and setbacks can have, and what they can do to you, and to see that you can overcome them, and then you know go ten times as far as what you ever thought um, is, is amazing. So that's that's really cool, man. Did you want to throw anything else? in there just to Uh, i'm sure you guys are going to be back here like yeah so i like that's why i want people to just get a bit of a background before you know you we just get looser on the podcast Mm. you know fair enough look (laughs) i've got um i've got a whole book i could share but we don't want that yeah no that's that's going through publishing first yeah yeah Yeah, i gotta i gotta make sure that some other you know some authors see it yeah it's proofread yeah the spelling and grammar checks yes yes Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. Uh, that was really good, Lucas. Thanks for that, man. Um, should, should, do you have any questions for Lucas, Ben? Um, yes, I am black. Huh? Yeah, yes, I am black. If you were confused about my skin color. <laughs> some people do get confused. They sometimes in, think I'm a mix. In summer, I get confused. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. You disappear. Um, nah, I was, I was thinking about asking, like, would you change anything? Because I know that's a big question. Is, you know, you've had injuries. You've had things that have happened. But it's like, would you change anything? Because, you know, things happen for a reason. Yeah. But if you could, would you go back and change something? All right. So just rules on the question. And I'm, I've hopped into a time machine. I've gone back You've and gone I have the ability. You're, you're at crossroads. It's like, you know, you can make a decision Parameters. on doing something and you can make a decision on doing something different. Do I have any memory of me making this decision yes. or do I just... You, you know the outcome is going to be different, but you okay. know that what you've accomplished now is not going to happen. Yeah. Okay, cool. No, I would not change anything, yeah. but I would change something very specific. Yeah, nothing about my life. I think that um, whenever... Uh, there, is a, there is a lot of bad that can happen in anyone's life and there's a lot of bad that's happened, but throughout all of these pain and experience and probably even just to call it... I'm just going to call it stress... 
through all of that stress has made me a better organism or human and it's made me who I am today. So like all of those bad parts, I mean, I don't want to be on a, a trade site right now. I mean, I love building. It's really good fun. But th who I am right now, I'm extremely happy with and the trajectory of where I'm going or I'm projected to go and, and what I want to do with my life, it's all because of the experiences I've had. And because of that one injury, because of that one surgeon who said that, I learned more about the human body than I ever thought I would. I'd found a passion that I'm extremely um, enjoying and where I'm at right now, I'm extremely happy because of that pain and because of those things that happen and because I didn't turn over or roll over and die with it. But if I were to go back, I would definitely give myself some winning lottery tickets because, mm. I mean, I mean, just, just mm. saying, just saying. Number four. That's a good answer. Mm. No, nah, you, yeah, you've had, yeah, you, you're an awesome coach. You're an awesome person, Lucas. So it's, um, it's cool just to hear a bit more about your story. And, you know, we've been mates for a while. And even just to, yeah, I, there's definitely things I, I just learned about you. So, yeah, mm. you're a cool dude, man. That warms my heart to know that I am cool. Thanks yeah. for sharing. Yeah, Benny, Benny, mm. what have you got for us, man? Um, yeah, Benny said he had to leave at 1.30, it's one thirty-seven right now. But right, I, we'll keep going. Not that I want to put the pressure on you or anything, but um, yeah, that's good to hear. But yeah, I'd love to just hear about your background. You came to us from Noosa originally, mm. like for, well, you came into Victoria from Noosa, but um, that's where you grew up and stuff. But yeah, you throw, it, throw it back to wherever you'd like to. All right. Um, so I started CrossFit in 2013. Um, I dabbled in it at home a little bit before doing that. Um, I've, I actually left school in year 10. So I finished year 10, left school, went and did my cert three and four, um, and then started working as a PT at Boot Camps Australia pretty much straight away. And I was working with a corporate group experience company as well, doing like corporate group team building. Um, and I worked at a cafe as well. So I had like three jobs when I left school. Wow. Um, and grinding. Yeah. Then, um, which the corporate team building was really good. Cause I was, I was like 16, 17 working with 30 year olds. So I was like, you kind of have to grow up real quick mm -hmm. and um, sort of figure things out and also run big groups of adults as a teenager. So I was like working, how, working out how people worked. Um, but then I was at Boot Camps Australia, one of the other trainers was doing CrossFit and I was like, oh, well, this, this is cool. Um, and I'd heard a little bit out from a mate as well who'd done some work with Steve Willis. If anyone knows Steve Willis, he came fourth at two th in the 2009 CrossFit Games. Oh, I thought it was He's, an actor. No, nah, Commando Steve. Commando Steve. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, so yes, he, yes. He'd done it, some he work. is an actor. He'd done some work with him. <laughs> he was on Biggest Loser. Yeah. Okay. Church. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd, he'd done some work with him and I'd, I'd looked him up and like, I'm like, oh, he's doing like deadlifts and handstand push-ups. They're two things I like to do. And um, I somehow discovered CrossFit, was looking at the games. Like, I think I did what everyone did and just sat there and just downloaded CrossFit. And he'd just sit there for like nonstop all day at the screen, just watching Rich Froning do things. And I'm like, I'm going to be this guy. I'm like 17. I'm like, oh my God. Um, so I just start dabbling in it. And then the gym around the corner across the Malulava opens up like a strength day. And I'm like, cool. I think I'm really strong. I'm going to go in. So I go in, talk to Brad. He's the owner. And he helps me like build my strength for like three weeks. And I think I ended up back squatting like 105 kilos or 95 kilos or something like that. And I was like, I'm like... In ASICs? Yeah, yeah, definitely. In ASICs, like no knee bend, just like... No, he was fixing my squat, which was really good. Zero knee bend. Zero knee bend. Like, it was a full-on hinge. Nose hit the floor. If anyone's seen me squat. Um, but it was good. And then on the third week, the workout was Diane. And I'm like, I can deadlift 100 kilos. I can do handstand push-ups. This is going to be awesome. So I did that. Um, I talked to him. He's like, yeah, can I come? Like, sweet, do the workout. You can have the movements. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Ended up doing it in like 419. And Dang. he's like, dude, like, that's pretty good. I'm like, oh, yeah, like, whatever. I had no concept of anything. Um, I remember watching him do it in like a minute 40. Went strict, unbroken. I'm like, wow. And if anyone knows Brad Bacon, he was like one of the goats back in the days, like 2010, 2011, 20, 2010, 2011, it was a regionals. Um, super strong dude. Um, so he sort of took me under his wing and he got me coaching across from Lullabar, like helped me develop as a coach, taught me everything I know about CrossFit at that point in time. Um, we did, I was with him for probably four or five years, I think, before I ended up going to CrossFit Noosa. And, um, that was awesome. In that time we did strength cycle after strength cycle after strength cycle. Cause I thought I was strong, but I wasn't, I was just really fit. Um, and we just did, I was doing, people ask me this all the time, like, oh, how'd you get, how'd you get strong? It's like, I was doing weightlifting 
five days a week in the morning plus three extra sessions in the afternoon. So it was only like eight to nine weightlifting sessions a week. And that'd be like compound, like squat, bench, dead, stuff like that in the morning, maybe some CrossFit training and then coming in and doing Olympic lifting accessories in the afternoon. And I was just like, I had the time to do that. So I was doing that. But um, along with that came injuries. So like patella tendinopathies, um, disc bulges, back tear, like tearing muscles in my backs, tearing my pecs, things like that. Like lots of injuries in those years, which put big delays in training. Broke my hand doing a box jump. That was kind of random. Um, but then from there, so... I'll come back to the injuries in a second. They're the good part of the story. But um, Matt Swift and Wendy Swift, if anyone knows them, they own, Cross- own CrossFit Brisbane, one of the OG gyms in Australia. Um, they bought CrossFit Noosa, which was like 30 minutes north of where I was living. And I'm like, cool, I want to be a really good coach. They're like the best. So it's like Jack with his training. I'm like, I'm going to go to where the best are. So it was really hard leaving Brad. Um, he's like a, almost like a dad to me in many ways. And, um, but I went there. I'm like, I want to be the best coach I can be. So I ended up going to work for Matt and Wendy at CrossFit Noosa. Um, that is an experience in itself and could probably use like a podcast for two hours just to talk about that process. <laughs> yeah. The best thing I ever did. Wow. Um, the amount of gratitude I have for those people is insane. Um, they, you know, you get people in your life that like take it upon themselves to tell you the things that other people aren't willing to because they're hard conversations to have. Mm-hmm. They highlight all those little things and the big things that you need to work on. But they do it in a way that's like, I'm telling you this because I care about you and this is going to be really hard, but you're either going to grow from this or not. So that whole experience was a big part of just like stepping out of my comfort zone and letting go of who I was and growing into who I could be. Um, And you're always constantly reminded just having them there. So very, very grateful for that. Um, I was at CrossFit Noosa for two and a half years. Then that time started doing the Forte method um, because Matt was doing it with Rob. So I started doing that. That was fantastic. Um, I love Rob's programming. He programs CrossFit better than most people. Um, and it's fun. Like, it's CrossFit. It's not a, just a competitor's program where you're doing rowing intervals and snatching. It's like, it's actually CrossFit. So I love that. Um, and then, what was it? Um, 2019, in September, I came down to Melbourne for the Forte Method Athlete Summit. And um, I was just chatting to Rob. I'm like, uh, the person or the girl I was with at the time, we're like, we're thinking about moving down to Melbourne. She wants to move for work. Um, <clears throat> would there be a, a job here for me if I moved down? And he's like, um, yeah, I'll let you know. Like, that sounds good. Probably like 18 months. We'll see. I get a message from him like th- two months later going, can you start? Like, when can you start? I was like, March. Like, let's go. So it was like from... I'm going to say October, November to March. I got all my shit sorted at Noosa, told the boss there that I was leaving. He wasn't very happy, but he was happy for me to go. And um, we moved down in March, the start of March, and then COVID hit in the middle of March. And so it was like two weeks into the job, gym shut down, everything shut down. The whole world went into lockdown for like two years. Couldn't get out of Melbourne. Um, In that time as well, this is like a big part of my life that I was like, everything changed and I sort of got a big perspective on things, which was really good. Like I went through a really bad breakup, um, was dealing with a whole heap of injuries, was in an environment that was completely new with people I didn't know, family, everything, all those safety blankets were gone basically. And I was just like, fuck, what am I going to do? And I'd been thinking about starting uni for some time because I'm like, I've got all these injuries, they're getting better, but I'm putting all this time and effort into training and I'm not getting the reward back that I want. I'm not getting that reward, like that investment that you want. And I'm like, I'm going to put this into something that I've, I've got to channel this addictive nature into something else that's actually going to give me a return later on in my life. And I'm like, well, I had this incredible osteo in Noosa. Um, she was able to help me with so many things. Um, and I'm like, maybe, and I'd learned a lot about anatomy, which has made me a much better coach. I'd learned how to scale and modify things for athletes. I'd become a lot more empathetic and understanding of injuries. I'd become a lot more, uh, I would just become a better coach in that way. And I'm like, maybe this is actually the avenue that I should be going down. It turns out Vic Uni's here. It's one of the best places in Queensland to study osteopathy. Oh, sorry, best place in, in Australia to study osteopathy. And, um, yeah, midway through that year with COVID and everything going on, work being inconsistent, just not being super happy in the environment I'm in, questioning what I want to do. I'm like, maybe this is just the catalyst that I need to actually make decisions for myself. I was single. I was finally by myself and actually being able to think clearly and be like, no, this is what I want to do. 
And so I made that decision. Um, unfortunately, as a whole part of that, like COVID was hard on the gym. Rob had to let someone go. I was going on my own avenue. That was me. Um, so we sort of parted ways with Frankston, which was hard because it's a beautiful community. I love training there. Um, but super happy with the decision I made to go to uni. And now, uh, this is my third year of uni now. Um, I did a year of biomed, did the first year of osteo last year. Starting it, absolutely loving it. Um, <clears throat> it's relating to coaching really well. But the best thing it's given me is this outlet for this addictive nature that I have, but it's actually working towards something that I want to do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And it's also given me this chance to put training on the, the back burner a bit and go, I've got an hour a day or I've got two hours a day to train and that's it. That's, that's me and I'm going to maximize every moment I have for that training and whatever happens, happens. And so what's happened as well is like been much happier. Um, I've been doing things I love. I'm coaching an environment that's fucking fantastic. I've never, I've coached in a better environment than underway. Um, and injuries are better. And it's like, I'm actually enjoying my training more because I've got other things that are filling my cup up around that. And I've got this purpose back in my life, which is really cool. Um, so now it's like doing well in the open this year. It's like, I've had training since Torian last year to do that makes me excited again to do that next year but i'm also like i don't care what happens like we touched on it earlier it's like i'm gonna go into touring this year and i'm just happy to be there like i'm stoked i just want to walk out on that floor walk around wave at everyone and be like hey how's it going please don't beat me by too much um no but i'm just stoked to be there and it's this outlook that i've never had before and i think that's maturity i i, I think that's just growing up and getting getting used to it and enjoying the experience more. Um, I definitely think that's because I'm focused at uni, I'm focused on studying. Like I know I have to get out of here to go home and study because I got an exam tomorrow. And it's like, I'm my addictive personality and all my addictive focus has gone there. It's also gone to coaching and applying what I'm learning with uni and applying what I've learned from years of coaching into being a better coach. Um, and then applying that as well to being a better athlete. And it's like, they're all contributing to each other really nicely. Mm -hmm. Um, Feeding each other. They're all feeding each other really mm. well. And um, yeah, it's, it's a good little combination. And I feel like no matter what I'm doing each day, like my day starts at 5 a.m. and sometimes I don't finish till 8 p.m. And it's just nonstop every day consistently. I'm either at uni, I'm either home studying, I'm either coaching, doing PTs or I'm training. And it's just that all day. And people are like, oh my God, how do you get burned? And like not get burned out. I'm like, I don't know. But it's like my cup is so full all the time because I'm working towards something each area. And it's exciting. And I, I get up each day and I'm sometimes like, fuck, how am I going to do this? And then you do it and you get through it. And you're like, you're constantly affirming that you can do these things and do these things. So, so when you feel like that and you're like, <laughs> oh, I'm not sure how I'm going to get after this day. Like, is that usually in the morning of? And you're like, you think about the day ahead and you're like, here we go. Like, as you have your coffee or? No, nah, that's normally like the Sunday. So like I'll plan everything out the Sunday beforehand and I'll like get in, all, book in all my PTs and make sure they're all squared away and. Um, know what coaches I'm, know what classes I'm coaching and then once I know that because that's the important shit that keeps the money coming in I can be like alright well no, sorry I should say I know my uni timetable so I've worked those things around my uni timetable coaching on top of that shout out to Jack who does the roster and underway he does an amazing job um, at juggling my uni roster well good dude um, and then I juggle training in on top of that so it might be like a little hour of session in the morning hop on the train go to uni come back do some PTs finish training and it's just like what can I do? And I map that all out on a Sunday. So it's different every week. Yeah, I get the Sunday-itis as well. Yeah. yeah. And it, but then it's just like, you just look and you're like, well, I can either do this or not do it. And it's like not doing it's not an option. So regardless of how hard it is, regardless of the challenges in place, it's like, you know, when the timer stopped on the workout, on the fifth work, it's like, meh. Like, it's happened, it's happened, move on. Like, let's, what do we need to do to keep going forward? Yeah. yeah. And it's just that every day. Mm -hmm. that perspective of like you got to do the work anyway so just do it and you yep. said that that flip on say event five say like three or four years ago mm. would that situation have changed was that mindset still there or have, um i think it's evolved a lot i I, you know, I look back at myself from so i'm 27 now i look back seven years ago i was young immature arrogant I was fucking driven. Like I wanted to go to the games. I wanted to win the games. And that was the only thing I wanted to do. And I was training and I was selfish. And I pushed myself so hard 
Um, hence so many injuries, so many back downs. But even when I was injured, it was like, what is, if I'm injured, I can't use my right knee because I've got a tear in my tendon. I'm going to use my upper body for everything. I'm just going to deadlift. I'm just going to do this. It was what every single time something happened was what, what can I do to keep going forward? <laughs> what can I do to keep going forward? I just didn't stop. And I think now it's like, I have a better perspective. It's like, well, if something's hurting. Like I slow down a little bit. <laughs> like I was dealing with a shoulder issue the last probably 12 months. And it's like, there are some days I just can't snatch. And I was like, okay, like I can snatch tomorrow. Yeah. So I have a bigger, greater, broader perspective on things. But yeah, if I look back at myself like five years ago or seven years ago, like I was arrogant, couldn't take on feedback. I wanted to be right. I was wanted to prove that I was the best, all this and that. And I, I think I definitely rub people the wrong way. And that's like, it upsets me now to think about that. But I'm also grateful that I went through that because I had wonderful people like Matt and Wendy, um, Asher or Brad and, and they'll know who they are, but it's like, they called me out on it. They pulled me up on it. And it's like, it's just been that natural growth and maturity. And I'm still working on it to this day, but it's like being more aware of that and coming through that and making mistakes, um, saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing. But it's like, if you're not in that position, if you don't do that, you don't give yourself that opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and even looking at like CrossFit, like when I was 20, I'd look at guys like Swanee and Royce and that, and I was like, I'm going to beat them. I'm going to beat them. Like, I'm so much better than them. I was like, I was fucking nowhere near them. Right. I look back at that now. If I saw me, I was like, you're an idiot. Yeah. Like, and even now it's like, I, I've just been doing CrossFit for 10 or 11 years and I'm 13th in quarterfinals. I don't think I'm that fit. I've just been doing it for long enough. I've earned the right to be there. And then I've got the experience to handle things and I've got that fitness underneath me. It just takes time to be good at. Uh -huh. And anyone coming to me, they're like, how do I like, I want to work on this. I want to be able to do this. I'm like, just whatever you want to achieve in the next 12 months, give yourself two years Yeah, and just turn up consistently. Mm -hmm. Like be, and stay uninjured. Stay uninjured. Stay uninjured. It's huge. Yes. And like, just give yourself time. Like drink water. The guys that have been, yeah, drink water. The guys that have been doing this for Feature protein. years are so damn good at it. Yeah. So damn like, like, like Swanee, I, I look up to him a lot. Um, he's been doing it for so long and he still doesn't train super competitively now, but he's still one of the fittest men in Australia. Mm. And it is like so much respect for that. Mm. Um, and I wish when I was younger, I had more respect for that because I would have taken the process slower. Mm -hmm. I would have gone, no, this is my place and I've got to earn the right. I thought I was already there. Mm -hmm. And it's like looking back on that, it's like, I can't even close. Mm -hmm. And so as any young people coming through, it's like, just give yourself time. Like, yeah, you're good, but the guys at the top are amazing. Mm -hmm. And like, you can get there, just give yourself time mm -hmm. and keep turning up and say, like, work hard and be humble. Mm. Don't make it a 12 month goal. Don't make it a six month goal. Don't make it a 12 week goal. If you can like set it out to like three years, five years, five two years, years, like you'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it's an awesome story, man. Again, mm. like, yeah, it's it's cool to hear more about your guys' come ups and and uh, the background of what's been going on and and yeah, I think um I think that arrogant nature you're talking about, um, that internal drive mm. is is really where it comes from. Like that mm. inner deep self belief yeah. of like you're looking at the top and yeah. you're like, you know what? Actually, I think if I like think about it, like I can beat those people, and I I think that's a good thing to have. Yeah. But it's just like the way you like you express it when you're young is is like that's it. That, is, I, is the thing that like changes as you get older because I think like that deep self belief is an unreal thing to have, hmm. um, and so, something that I didn't have in the start. I was like, uh, I don't know, like I, that's something I've had to really work on, hmm. um, that's and that's just how we like we're different. But yeah. you know, um, but it's cool to hear Jay a lot. Like his confidence, yeah. like he he acts like he's already won before he's won. Yeah, and without meeting him, like the shout out to Jay here. Before I met him, and he's a fucking legend. I love him. Um, before I met him, like this kid's pretty arrogant. Like I don't know if I'm gonna like him. Like I don't like because like all the champ shit and this and that. Meeting him, I'm like he is one of the most humble people I've ever met. Him and Maddie. Yeah, and will go out of his way to have a conversation with you. He's so kind, but like the confidence that he just puts on, and now he's like he's walking the walk. But it's like that perception of being, you know, I was in Queensland, I had no idea what he was actually like as a person, but you get to know him. He's, he's nothing like what he may portray at times in right. that confidence, but it's like, he's also one of the best in Australia. Well, he's the best in Australia, one of the best in the world. He's got that right to be that confident. Yeah. He's earned that right. And mm. he, he puts that face on because it's like, if you don't believe it, 
it's not going to happen. Like, you can't walk out on the floor and go, like, oh, I don't know if I can do this today. This is not, for, like, there's nine other dudes that are sitting there going, I'm going to bleed to win. Yeah. And, like, you've got to, if you're not thinking that, you're going to fake it. Yeah. So. Um, so my question for you is how would, how do you build confidence? I, so I reckon you now, I, like, now how I'd answer that question is just from, like, daily repetitive turning up doing it. Like, if I think about my training, I turn up each day and I do what's expected of me, of what I expect myself. I hit the rates, I hit the sets, I do the workout in the time I think I need to do it in or whatever. And I build that confidence by doing the work. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if I do the work and I don't leave a stone unturned, I have no reason not to be confident. Mm -hmm. But if there's things that I haven't done and haven't touched on, I'm not confident. And it's the same when I'm studying for an exam, like... I will go and study everything I need to study so that I walk in and I'm confident because I've earned the right to be confident. Mm -hmm. And I know the feeling of walking into an exam or walking into a, a competition and not having done the work. You're not confident. Mm -hmm. Like you'll, you'll never rise to the level of your train uh, competition. You'll always fall to the level of your training. So you can't hope to just pull it out, hat out of the back. Like there's 29 other people there who've done the work. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, confidence is just putting in the work every single day and then letting that speak for itself. So it's like the way you're doing the work, but then like in the moment, you're also just thinking about what you've done. You think back and go, yeah, I'm actually proud of what I've done and like deserve to be here. And, and that connects you to your confidence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think in the moment, like let's say I'm you know, walking on the floor at Torian, um, I will look back at all the moments that like I was training at 8 p.m. at night or I was doing echo bike intervals at 6.30 in the morning because I had to go to uni at 8. It's like all those moments where I went, I did the thing I didn't want to do in the moment where I could have just taken the easy way out. I could have just not done it. I, I could have not had that extra meal. I could have not sat there for that extra hour of study. I could have done all this stuff. So I'll walk out on that floor and go, no, like I did the hard things and I didn't choose the easy way out and I've earned the right to be here. And then I can relax and have fun. And then would you say in turn it helps you show up and do those hard things? Yeah, yeah. Because it gives you confidence. Like I've done hard things in training. So I know that when I'm going to go out on the floor, I'm going to do them. Yeah. And I also know looking back on that, there are moments where I didn't do hard things. There are moments I took the easy way out. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm always trying to improve on. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Where can, we, where can we buy your book? Uh, it hasn't been written yet. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know what it is. Pre-sales in your link tree. Yeah. yeah. I'm just waiting for yours subscribe to your tomorrow <laughs> there is a link boys a shirt. it's been an absolute pleasure having you on uh, episode five of uh, the underway podcast thank you so much for listening guys um uh if you do enjoy this remember to give us a five star rating on spotify um shout out to luke o'brien and ben newland you can follow them on instagram they're literally that is their tags on instagram you'll find them if you if you write those in um benny newland yep. lucas o o brian mm. Um, and yeah, you, de definitely worth the follow. And uh, yeah, just want to just want to thank you boys so much for giving up your time and your days and your weeks and coming down and and yeah, just no, just chewing the fat. Thank you, my for, absolute uh, pleasure. Thank you for hosting mm. and having us on. I've uh, quite enjoyed. I, uh, to be honest, even though my watch isn't on, it feels <laughs> like it's been sixty minutes, but far out. It's been what two hours? It's been two hours. This has been a very pleasurable time. Jesus. Button chins like this. So I uh, thank you did for you having have fun? us. I had a great time. No. <laughs> Uh, it's a good one. My pleasure, boys. Uh, absolute pleasure. But thank you for listening, guys. That's it. That's a wrap. Thanks. Um, Peace. See you, city. <laughs>